Alright, hello all you crazy people out there, this is Dragonite, and welcome back to 3D in Game Maker. So, in the last part, kind of in the last part, I talked about making 3D models in Game Maker, and uh, using them, which would ideally be an alternative to just drawing simple shapes for all of the things in your 3D world, and in this part I'm going to be showing you how to actually use those programmatically. So let's close out of that. I should probably uh, save this as week 5 instead of week 4. Thank you. Anyway, if you're here to see how you could import models from Model Creator for Game Maker or Civ Model or something like that into Game Maker, uh, click the annotation on the screen, go to the timestamp, probably somewhere in the middle of the video because in the beginning I'm just going to show you how to create and use these things through code. So anyway, let's go into the camera object, into the, uh, not the camera, the world object rather, and I'm going to go into the create event, and I am going to write one line of code, and that says model equals d3d create d3d, or model create. Like surfaces, like data structures, like a bunch of other things, uh, 3D models are a dynamic structure in Game Maker. They have specific functions to create them. Uh, they have specific functions to delete them. I am not going to delete the model. That's just what the code looks like should you want to. And from here, you can use pretty much any of the primitive shapes you can add to the model. Uh, so you can say d3d model block, and the model that you are going to be adding to is going to be the one that we just created, stored in the variable model. Um, how about the x-coordinates? Let's put that at negative 10, negative 10, 0, and let's have that go to positive 10, positive 10, 20. And the h repeat and v repeat is going to be 1, and it does not take a texture argument for reasons that you shall see in a minute. And... How about on top of that we add D3D model, what's a good shape? Let's draw a cone on top of that model. So the cone can go from negative 10, negative 10 to the top of the model. So that'll be negative 10, negative 10, 20 to positive 10, positive 10, how about 40? And this is going to take an HRP, V repeat, closed in steps, again no texture. Let's make closed true and uh, steps can be, what did I do last time? I believe 16. And I need to uh, include an argument that is for the model that you're adding to again, just like with D3D model block. Anyway, in the draw event, instead of doing this ellipsoid code, and I see I did a lot of screwing around with uh, lights. So we're gonna be saying no to the ellipsoid. We're going to be drawing a block uh, let's not draw the block either, but instead d3d model draw. And this is going to take a couple arguments, which would be, in this case, uh, the index, so model, that variable, the x, the y, and the texture id. Uh, so let's go 500, 500, 0 is the 3d coordinates, and the texture id is, what is it, background get texture of... that. And I'm going to run the game, and you're going to see, um, not too differently from what was already existing in the game world right when I started this video, uh, but it is going to be a completely white screen. Did I forget to draw something? Did I comment out something important? Oh, this I don't want to comment out. Let's not comment that out. Alright, there we go. Now we have a block with a cone on top of it. And this is a 3D model being drawn in one draw call. And I can, um, I can get rid of, really, the block that I was drawing earlier. Now that's nice, but it's probably not going to be what you're going to be wanting to do with the 3D model functions. Again, a problem I cited with 3D models, aside from that they perform really, really badly if you have a lot of them in the game world, is that you can't do a whole lot with them graphically, because they're just basic geometric shapes. And... Instead, if you want some more interesting shapes, you can use the 3D primitive function. So that would be instead D3D model primitives, if I can type that properly. Uh, you can say D3D model primitive begin, and you can begin it on model. And the kind, this is very similar to the video on 2D primitives that I did. You have your line lists, your line strips, your point lists, your triangle fans, your triangle lists and triangle strips. They work the same way as 2D primitives. They are basically collections of triangles that you can draw, collections of lines that you can draw, collections of points that you can draw. I am not going to go into too much detail in those here. 
But instead, I am going to be talking about what I expect most people clicking on this video are interested in. So real quickly, I am going to open up the two models that I created in Model Creator in the last two videos, which would be this kind of awkward looking clock tower and um, this set of table and chairs. And you can see them here. Uh, one of them is textured, the other is not. This, I guess if you stretch your imagination, it kind of looks like a clock tower, I don't know. So the first thing that I need to do is go into included files, say create included files. If you're using GameMaker 8.1 or previous versions, you can skip that. And I'm going to locate the two files on my computer. So that would be clocktower.gmod and tableandchairs.gmod. And I'm going to say d3d model load. And the index of the model that I am loading into is going to be um, the variable that was created with d3d model create. And the file name of the model that I am going to be loading is going to be tableandchairs.gmod. And now when I run the game, it didn't show anything. Am I not allowed to have spaces in the file names? Do I have to take the, uh, the spaces out of this file name? So we're going to say rename this tableandchairs.gmod. Yeah, it looks like I'm not allowed to have spaces in the file names. Uh, let me just say open in Explorer to make sure that um, that's odd. I imported the files, but it didn't actually look like it imported them. So let me go and one, take the space out of that file name, and two, manually copy these into the um, the file system directory. It's very strange. GameMaker has some very weird issues with importing files and sometimes failing to do so and um, not telling you that the, that something went wrong. So let me try that again. That, that definitely should not have happened. All right, so it worked this time, nothing went wrong. And you can see there is a table and a chair and they have this very odd wood texture that I just copied off of Google Images. I really shouldn't do that. I, should, I really should uh, credit my images when I'm making Game Maker tutorials. I'm gonna try and dig up the original source for that eventually. Anyway. It looks rather strange with that texture. If you want to take off the texture, you could say instead of using the background, uh, the wood texture, you could you could just say draw it with negative one, and that will make it look a little bit more smooth, but a little bit more perhaps colorless. Um, obviously, it's just going to be a plain old boring grayish white, depending on the lighting. Anyway, now I suppose the fun begins because instead of loading in tableandchairs.gmod, I'm going to load in clocktower.gmod, and this is going to have the same problem, that it wasn't textured. However, I did dedicate the video that I made this in to uh, showing you how to use texture as a model creator for Game Maker. So, once I'm done looking at that boring gray tower, I can go and import the texture image that I used for this, um, for this model. This is definitely not it. Where is it? Files, clock. So I can call this something like back clock and in the draw event instead of saying draw this tower with the background wood texture we can say draw the image with the background clock texture and since that has the um since that has the correct texture mapping information you can see now it has the uh the stone on the sides the uh, roof tiles on the roof and the weird roman numeral pokeball clock face on the front and there's a little bit of z fighting there which is caused by um, the clock face and the wall lying on the same plane. You could eliminate that by moving out the clock face by say one pixel unit, moving the clock face forward. I'm lazy, so I'm gonna assign that as homework instead. Don't tell anybody I said that. Anyway, that is how you use 3D models in Game Maker. It's deceptively simple, it's very useful because 3D models can look a lot better than just using primitive shapes. Uh, the other benefit that doesn't get talked about quite as much the factor that determines how well your 3D games perform in Game Maker isn't so much the number of steps you have in, say, a sphere or a cylinder, or the number of vertices you have in a 3D model like this, but it's the number of times you say things like D3D model draw. And I may make a whole separate video on this, but this basically ships off a bunch of information to the graphics processing unit on your computer and tells it to deal with all the drawing instead of the CPU. And since the graphics processing unit is obviously optimized to do that kind of work, it's a lot faster to have a lot of information in one model file than it is to have a lot of model files with very little information in them. 
I've done a lot of work messing around with that kind of thing, and I will definitely make another video on that in the future if people want me to talk about that, optimizing your 3D games. But anyway, as always, I hope you found this useful. I hope you all enjoyed that. I will have this project file available for download in the description of this video. My name is Dragonite, and I will see you all later.